This might seem like a complete abuse of hey everybody, but this video might become really long and I thought to skip all the shenanigans and get just straight to the point. So in this video, I will walk you through the process of creating, coding, deploying, and then configuring your PCF controls that could bear some value in real world scenarios. But before we get our hands dirty with the code, let's jump into environment and let's see the demo of what exactly we are going to be building. This PCF control is just a sample button that we could put on the form. When I click this button, the navigation event will occur and we will get our uh, quick create form for opportunity record in the system. But the interesting part about this PCF control is that it's not only usable for the account form, it can be configured for any form in the system, for example, contact form as well. So you can see if I navigate into my contact information, I have the same blue button uh, with different name, and this button will then open different form. For In this particular case, it will open contact event form. So this PCF control allows us to create a custom button and then configure certain properties that would define what kind of related entity form we want to open. So once the demo is out of the way, we can go and start creating our PCF control. So you can see that I already opened my terminal for folder in which I want to create my PCF control. If you don't know how to do it, you just can Google it in its different procedure in Mac and Windows. But in general, you just want to run cd command and give it a path to the folder in which you want to create your stuff. What I like to do actually with our platform CLI is to use helps function as a cheat sheet uh, in order to know what kind of parameters I need to pass to my PCF control. So here I could say back PCF init and then say help. It will then list me out all the uh, parameters that I need to pass. So here then I will know that I need to start with back PCF initialize and the first parameter goes under the alias of ns which is namespace and in this case it's custom button namespace. Then we have a name and in this particular case it will be just custom button. Third parameter is template which is just T. And in here we are going to be using field template because um, the button will be registered on the field. And then we have framework, which goes by FW. And framework will be React, so we will be using React framework. And last thing um, that we will be using is we will say that we want to install NPM packages when the um, component is created. We can do it later on, but I don't see the point in delaying. So I will say npm true. And that's basically it. I'll hit enter and it will start creating me my PCF control. So you can see that the first thing that it does creates the, the actual PCF control and then it will install my npm packages. So once everything is created, we can use another command to just open it in a Visual Studio code. So we can say code and dot and what it will do it will just open us a Visual Studio code to inspect our component. So now we will go to the next part, which is actually the coding part. Okay, so I'll start our coding path with actually updating our sample hello world DSX file so it would resemble more the actual thing that we are building. So instead of hello world DSX, we will name this as custom button. Now what I will do is I will update our class component to a functional component. And there is nothing wrong with class components, but I just feel that functional components are something that is easier to work with. So I will just uh, rewrite this into export on custom button, which is of type react functional component. It takes a I hello world props as input properties. And this will be equal to a function which returns an empty div for now. Now, also to have a little bit of house cleaning, I will change this i hello world props into i custom button props. 
And since we updated our component, we will also need to update our index.ts files. So here, instead of import hello world, we will import custom button. And instead of I hello world props, we will do I custom button props. And we will reuse these components to render everything. And that's it. We just updated our class component into a functional component. Now we can actually start uh, building our button UI. So I will start by adding some styling to our parent component so that we would align our button where we want it to be. And for our button, I will add primary button from Fluent UI library. Of course, we will need to import that component into our custom button component. And in here, we will provide a couple of properties, one of which is the button name. And for now, we will just assign default value. Uh, later on, we will need to make it dynamic. And the second property will be on click event. And on this event, we will call a function which is called on button click. So now I will do temporary on button click implementation. So I will just copy some code here which is just a function that puts in the console button clicked line. We will do further implementation later on, but now we can worry about our button name, uh, which is now set to click me, but we actually want to have that dynamic. And to have that dynamic, we will need to introduce a property for PCF configuration where we, where we will be able to pass that value. So if I would go into my control manifest input.xml file, you can see that I already created a property called button name and this uh, property will have input as usage, meaning that we will be able to provide any kind of string for our button name. But now the question arises, how do we access this button name property? And to do so, we will have to rely on context file, which can be found on the initialization and update view methods. We could actually pass this context object into our React element as a property, but what I will do is I will create a service.ts file from which we can access that context property globally because that will make our life a little bit easier in case this component will grow with more components added so that we wouldn't need to pass that property from component to component. So let's just do that. I will create a new folder called services in my object tree. And for this folder, I will create a new file called dataverse services.ts. And in here we will export a couple of parameters, one of which is our context. So we will say export let because it will be overridden value over time. And we will name it context and off type. And we can borrow that type from our index.ts. So we have it here. So and also what we will need to do is to import I inputs value from our generated. And this inputs object is being generated every time PCF control is built and it looks into our manifest file and just renders the properties that are being put in there. So that button name that we defined, it will be already set into our I inputs object as a selectable property. So once we have our context, we also need to have a method to set that context globally. So I will say export. Now it's constant because it's a method and let's call it set context and it will be equal to a function. And this function will get context as an input parameter. Again, of type component framework context I inputs. And in here we will just override our context with new context. So now, once we have our set context method, we need to call it whenever our PCF control updates. So I will now jump into our index.ts file. I will import our set context method. And I will use it in our update view method where I will pass the context object for it. Once we set our global context in update view, method, we can then import the actual context object in our custom button component. I will say import context from services data versus services. And from this context, we can already access our button name. So I will say context parameters button name. And in here, since it's an input value, we will need a raw value and we will turn it into string. And that's about it. So now we have our text as a dynamic value that will be provided when configuring our PCF control. 
Before we jump into our on button click implementation, I will also add some styling to our primary button and also I will do some code alignment, but I will just copy a style sheet here. And by the way, this styling can also be adjusted with properties that could be passed from control manifest. So it's fully customizable. For example, now I set the width of 62% of given container. But you can also make it dynamic. You can provide the width in control manifest. And then whenever you're configuring your button, you would be able to choose what's the width of it. And same goes with the alignments and, and text in the button and so on, and maybe the color. So it's completely up to you. For now, I will not stretch it too far and just leave it as uh, hard-coded values. Now we can jump into our on button click implementation. So whenever our button is clicked, we want to open model driven apps create form for particular entity. And to do so, we can utilize method in context object in navigation part, which is called open form. And this open form will take into one parameter or you can provide a couple, but in our case, one will be enough, which is called entity form options. And now we will need to create this object. Our object for now will contain three properties. First one is entity name. We will leave it empty for now. Second property is create from entity, which will be an object on its own. Again, for now it will be empty. And the third property will be use quick create form, which is true because if possible, we want to open a quick create form. Now let's define create from entity properties. So the first one is entity type. We will leave it as empty string for now. Then we have ID value, which will be a good, but for now we again leave it as an empty string. And the last one is name of the entity which will also be a no value. So we've just created our entity form options. And now we can see that these empty values will need to be dynamic ones. So what we will do now is we will go and update our control manifest file so we could provide those values when we are configuring our PCF control. In our control manifest input file, we will add additional four properties. So I just pasted them in here to save time. And most of them are really uh, the same thing as button name, apart from couple, one of which is create from entity name, which will be a bound one, meaning that we don't need to type it by hand, but we can attach it to certain field of the entity. So for example, if we, if we have an account entity, we can bound this property to that account's name. Same goes with create from entity ID, uh, which we can bound to account ID field. And then for create from entity logical name, we will put it by hand because it will not change. And the same goes for the related entity logical name. We will put it by hand because it will not change. Now that our properties are defined, let's jump into our custom button component and add those properties here. And you can see that within our parameters, uh, there are still no create form entity ID and entity name and so on. And that's because the manifest types file was not yet updated. To do so, I can run npm run build command in our terminal. So that will go through our manifest file and update our manifest types.ts file. So let's just do that. There we go. So you can see that all those properties were generated and now we shouldn't get any problems in our custom button.tsx file anymore. We can try now use our properties in our entity form options object and assign them. So our related entity logical name will go under entity name and create entity from entity logical name I will go here. The ID is going under ID and then create from entity name will go right here. Now you can see that our entity form op options are still complaining. And that is because our constants 
they could be either string or undefined and TypeScript is not allowing us to do so. So we will want to wrap our object inside of if statement and well basically general all this code inside of if statement to check if all of these properties are proper strings and only then follow on with the procedure. So let's just do that. So I will open an if statement here and inside of that if statement I will check if our parameters are not undefined and if so I will follow along with the further code execution. So now that the coding part is complete we can go ahead and deploy our PCF control into environment. So I will open a terminal and in the terminal I will start by creating a authentication and authentication profile. So I will say pack auth and then create. I will provide a name and then provide the environment. I already have a IntelliSense suggesting me certain values, but you will have to provide your own parameters. So I will just create my authentication profile. This will lead me to out of the box Microsoft login window in which I will need to select my user. I'll just do that. And that's about it. Now uh, I can select my profile so i will say back of select and in this case the index will be seven uh, if you're not sure about the index you can always run back of list function and it will give you the whole set of all of your environments with indexes provided so in this case i will select my environment and once environment is selected i can start deploying which is back pcf push and it's as simple as that you can also provide some additional parameters for pack pcf push uh, like prefix of your component uh, solution and so on uh, but for now i will go just by default which will give me some default prefix and all that jazz so it will take some time and we'll go now into the configuring part. So you can see already that I opened my account form in which I will implement my PCF control and I will implement it on a fax field because I think I'm not going to be using it anytime soon. So I will select the field and I will say add component and in here I will be presented with the uh, possible components to use. So in this particular case we can already see that we have our custom button and we will need to provide certain values for it and these values they are corresponding to our properties that we defined in our manifest file. So the first one is the button name and the button name will be create opportunity. Then we will need to provide the related entity logical name. So in this particular case, case it's DIS opportunity. By the way, this is the custom opportunity entity that I've created. And then create from entity ID, which means that we need to define here the accounts ID. And in this case, it's account text. And this is why I'm not really fond of new interface because it doesn't say account ID. It just says account and you need to assume that this is account ID, but so be it. Then create from entity logical name. So in this particular case, it's just account and create from entity name, we will need to define account name. And that's it. Basically, we define all the values. All that's left to do is to press done. And you can already see that our button is created, but also to make it look a bit more presentable, I will hide the label of the field. Um, so our button would look a little bit bigger. And that's it. Basically, we can save and publish. And this is how you configure it. And you can imagine now that if you would have more properties, more variables and more logic towards your button, you could extend this button to do pretty much anything you want in your organization. And maybe if you have any ideas or any wishes where you would want to see implementation, you could drop a comment in the comment section below and I could maybe do that in the next video. So that's everything that I wanted to share with you this time. And you know the drill. Please like and subscribe if you feel that this video was informative and useful. And please leave a comment below if you have any ideas for future videos. Hope to see you next time and have a good day.